Hello, all. Here is the recorded story for tonight. I'm sorry that I couldn't join you live, but I have my three dogs with me and it's raining and thundering and lightning and they're a little nervous. So please excuse them if they, if they need to participate in tonight's story. Tonight's story is called Denny and the Could Be. And because I am telling it to you right now, whenever I tell a story, it's always a little bit different because sometimes the, uh, the story fairies whisper things in my ears and I can't help but take them in different directions. So apologies if you'd like it told the same way that you may have heard it before, but tonight you might learn something new. So Denny and the could be. Once upon a time, there was a young girl named Denise and her parents called her Denny and she lived in a small town outside of a big city. She lived in a small neighborhood in that small town, and at the end of her street was a bakery where her mother and father would sometimes take Denny and they would get muffins or they would get bagels. And she knew the bakery well, but she knew her street even better. And even more than her street, she knew her yard. And even more than her yard, she knew her house and knew her room. Every detail in her house and all around her yard, she knew when the crocuses would come up, where they would come up. She knew every creek and every floorboard inside the house. She knew everything about her house, and this made her feel very calm, and very strong, and very confident. Now, Denny was young enough so that uh, one summer she was anticipating going to kindergarten for the first time, and she was very excited about it. That is until she had a conversation with her third grade year old cousin named Lucas. And Lucas told her a few things that were very concerning. Lucas seemed to think that in her school there were bullies and bullies were people, according to him, that would tease you and sometimes call you names and might even take your lunch. Very concerning. And he also told her that there were bells in her school, bells on the walls that would ring very loud. And sometimes they would ring so loud that they would hurt your ears and maybe even make it so you couldn't hear. So these are things that her uh, nine-year-old cousin told her and they were of course very concerning and she wasn't sure they were true, but she worried that they might be. So much so that she, no longer was excited about going to kindergarten. So that on the first day of kindergarten, she was very resistant to going. She told her parents as much, I don't want to go, I don't want these things to happen. And her parents tried to tell her that such things wouldn't, but she thought they could, they could be true. And so they brought her to the classroom and um, she was continuing to be very nervous about going inside until she saw the teacher. His name was Mr. James. He was shorter than her father. He looked kind of strong. He had wide shoulders and he had strong hands. He wore jeans and a work shirt that he had buttoned up. And he had a fuzzy little beard, and dark hair, and bright eyes, and he was smiling. She immediately liked him and he smiled at her and and she could tell that he liked her. And the first thing that he said to her, as soon as he knew her name, Denny, he said, Denny, would you join me over in the kitchen? I need a baker's helper. She agreed and immediately forgot about all the things that she was worried about, forgot about all the things that could happen. And so he told her exactly what to do, how to mix, what to put in the bowl and she was mixing it up when her eyes happened to notice something in the hallway, a bell. It was bolted onto the wall and it made her feel very nervous to see that. In fact, it made her so nervous that she put the bowl down and covered her ears because she thought that the bell might go off and she didn't want it to hurt her ears. Well, of course, Mr. James noticed this and he said, are you worried about the bell? Denny said, yes, my cousin said that sometimes bells like that will go off and they'll be so loud that they could hurt your ears. And Mr. James said, your cousin 
Does he go to this school? She said, no. He's in third grade and he goes to a different school. Mr. James said, interesting. Now, how does he know about the bells in our school? And she said, I think some of his friends might have told him and he told me. He said, ah, I'm going to tell you something, Denny. I believe that you and your cousin were both bitten by a could be. She had no idea what he was talking about, a could be. And he said, yes, a could be. Because the fact of the matter is that is a bell that lets us know when one class is over and the next class begins. And it does ring and it rings at a very specific time. And I can tell you when that time is. And it's actually, I don't think it's that loud, but, uh, but the could be's are little could be's that they buzz around and they whisper in your ear and they think things could be a certain way and they and they can sometimes be quite dramatic and tell you things that uh, it could be painful and it could be uh, much more than it actually is until you are very worried and very anxious about what could be. Now this made a lot of sense to her and and he said, well, I know this very well because I used to be bitten by could be's all the time. In fact, there was one bee that stung me and it was in my basement. Um, I had a could be that told me that my basement floor was so hot and so sticky that my feet would stick to the floor and then they would get as hot as lava. Can you believe that? And she thought that was actually quite silly and she put her hand over her mouth to so that he wouldn't see that she was smiling. And he said, oh no, I, I know it's very silly indeed, but I thought it could be. I would throw pillows down and, and only hop from pillow to pillow in order to get across the room. Now she couldn't help but chuckle and he chuckled as well. And he said, but I was lucky. You see, my mother understood could be's and she had a remedy. She had a thing that could make the could be's go away instantly. Now she was very interested and she leaned forward wondering what that could be. And he said, and I actually have some with me. And he went over to a drawer and took out a little spray bottle. And he um, leaned the spray bottle forward so, so that she could smell it. And she said, and he said, this is a could be spray. And you'll smell that it actually smells quite nice. In fact, let me spray some into the air. And he did, he sprayed it up over them. And as the smell descended, she could smell and it was like lavender and it smelled like herbs and spice. It was very good and it relaxed her. He said, it's nice, isn't it? And she agreed. And he said, yes, people like could be sprays. You know who doesn't like could be sprays? Could be's, makes them disappear. So whenever you are stung by a could be, I would be happy to use this spray and I'll spray it and your thoughts of what could be might go away. And I will also tell you when that bell is going to ring. And she agreed. She actually felt much better having smelled that could be spray and it worked. She no longer worried about the bell. And true to his word, when the bell was about to ring, he let her know and the bell rang and it didn't bother her. It didn't make her feel scared. And that was the case for much of the day, that is until lunchtime when she went to the lunchroom cafeteria and she went to a specific um, uh, part of the cafeteria where the kindergartners went. And then she noticed that sitting by himself was a boy in her classroom and she knew his name was Thompson and Thompson was sitting by himself and he was frowning. He was frowning as he ate. Every bite he ate, he continued to frown and she thought that he looked angry. And she immediately thought of her cousin again and she worried, is he mad? Is he a bully? She thought. And she thought about Lucas's words about how they will tease you and how they'll call you names and they might even take your lunch. And she was worried about Thompson coming over and taking her lunch. So she sat on the other side and she kept her eyes on him. And every time she saw him, she saw that he was frowning. So all throughout lunchtime, she kept thinking more and more that 
Thompson must be a bully. So that when they went back into the classroom, she went straight to Mr. James and she said, Mr. James, I think we might have a bully. And he said, really? Why don't you tell me what a bully is so that I understand what you mean? So she did, she told him about teasing and name calling and maybe taking lunch. And Mr. James scratched his chin and then said, did you learn about this from your cousin, Lucas? She nodded her head and he said, well, I think you might have been stung twice. And then he said, once was that there were bullies in this school and to my knowledge, I don't know of any. Can I ask you, Denny, have you seen or heard anyone calling names or teasing or stealing lunches? She shook her head no. And she said, and the other could be stung, sting was about Thompson because Thompson Barlow, tell me, did you see him teasing anyone or calling anyone names or uh, taking anyone's lunch? No, she shook her head. I said, yes, I didn't think so. Because I know Thompson Barlow. And in, in this case, these could be's, I don't even think we need to use the could be spray. I have a remedy for that that will work even better. And then he looked over and called Thompson to come over. And she was nervous at first until she saw frowning Thompson, who was sitting over there paging through a pixie, uh, picture book, looked up and smiled, and his face completely transformed. And she couldn't help but smile back. And it was at that moment that Thompson and Denny became friends. Well, this was the case day after day. Things just got better and better for her. And on occasion, there were moments where she heard something that made her nervous and she would go to Mr. James, like the time that she came to him and asked him about this word cooties and that there were children in her classroom that were worried about getting cooties and that apparently if you got cooties, you, your tongue would turn orange and that you could catch cooties if someone said your name in a funny way and she was very worried about that. And again, Mr. James would say, have you seen anyone's tongue turn orange? No, I think you've been stung by a could be. I'm glad you come to me though, because I can help you through this. And on occasion, he would spritz the could be spray and other times he would have other ways of helping her. And this became a part of who Denny was. Sometimes when she would get worried, she would think to herself, was I stung by a could be? And if she wasn't sure, she would talk to Mr. James. And then one time, she was in a position to help someone else. One of her friends was talking to another one of her friends. Melissa was talking to Leo. And she overheard Melissa saying that there was a new kind of cooties. And this new kind of cooties would make your ears turn purple. And so she walked over and said, that is a could be and you've been stung. And so she explained to them what a could be was and about how there are certain things that you can catch with colds and that Mr. James, that's why he has us all wash our hands and sneeze into our sleeves. And if we don't feel well to stay home, those are all things that we do for colds, but for cooties and ears turning purple, those are could be's. And that Mr. James had a special spray that they could use to make the could be go away. And as she was telling them this, she could see that her two friends believed her and their shoulders were going down and demonstrating that that made them feel more safe and relaxed. That whenever they were worried about something, that it could be true, but they weren't sure. They could go to the teacher, or they could go to their friends, 
and that there was such a thing as a could-be spray that could help them let go and relax and enjoy their day. Well, you might be able to hear the storm outside is picked up and my dogs are looking like they're more relaxed than I thought. I think they might be worried that there's a could be out buzzing around that says that lightning is something other than what it is. So I'm going to go find my could be spray and see if it helps my dogs. And for the rest of you, I hope you have a sweet and deep sleep tonight. And I hope to see you all tomorrow.